thank you. Thank you to all our friends in Latin America. I am in Buenos Aires. I am Sebastian Cabello. I am the CEO of SMC Plus Digital Public Affairs. We are a young company. I want to, of course, thank LACNEC. He's really trusted us to carry out this study. We will present it for well, me and my colleague, Diego Ros Rudy, and well, he'll introduce himself. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, of course, for being here with us today. As Sebastian just said, I am a manager at SMC Plus. And as Sebastian just did, I want to thank all of the operators. We're going to share with you the findings of our study. We surveyed 25 operators who very kindly participated in our interviews, provided information. And if any of you are here today, thank you. Thank you for cooperating. Thank you for being so patient with us while we carried out our study. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So SMC Plus Consulting, we are a young consulting company and we want to find new visual narratives of the digital ecosystem. Today, we will very briefly share where IPVC uh, stood at the end of 2020. Carlos and Oscar just spoke about the different trends and statistics. So we want to add on to that and share the findings of our study. We speak about the behavior of operators, deployment, and we did a sort of segmented analysis to identify stakeholders. And we also conducted an economic model to try to determine determine which incentives we could consider for the deployment of IPv6, what could be considered drivers for a broader update and deployment in our region, and finally some conclusions compared conclusions based on uh, LACNIC's 2016 study. We had four objectives in the first place to determine current uh, trends in the deployment. The second one was to understand the behavior of operators around IPv6 deployment, obstacles, incentives, drivers, benefits, and that sort of segmentation I just mentioned. The third objective and economic analysis of the deployment or lack of deployment, because some operators are not doing it, and try to uh, match this to some values. I am an economist, and we also uh, work with the flow of benefits or the lack of deployment and that consequences. And finally, some of the conclusions, lessons learned, and course of action. So let's go to the first uh, part of the trend uh, analysis. Last year, after the, the, the onset of the pandemic, deployment really sped up. Allocation of IPv6 sped up every, uh, every month. COVID really caused an acceleration in telework, telemedicine, so internet became more crucial, even government policies were implemented to promote wider and broader access. And of course, there was a, a speedier allocation of IPv6, there are few available. No, the, the last slot was already running out. And so we are at, at a critical standpoint that those who still have addresses available can speculate a little bit, but that could also come at a cost. That slide shows a summary and I'm sure you have seen it before. It's an overview of the region of Latin America and the Caribbean. 
and adoption stands at about 21%, eight percentage points below the world average. We can see in America is 49%, European Union 44%. There are some particular cases with very high adoption, Mexico, Brazil, and Uruguay over the regional average. South America, I would say, is at an average of 24%. Central America, 3%, so much lower, even though there are some countries like Guatemala and, well, Mexico, which is considered to be in this region, sort of bump up the average a little bit and the Caribbean at an average 6%. Let me just add something here. If you are trying to compare these figures with the figures that Carlos presented, we, we finished this report during the first quarter of this year. So the numbers that Carlos presented have changed a little bit. That's why you're going to notice there are some minor differences. In the second chapter of our study, we uh, explored and surveyed users to, to, well, to understand the behavior of operators with regards to IPv6 deployment. Some of you might remember that in 2016, LACNIC carried out a similar study to analyze at the point at that time the deployment of IPv6. And the objective was to sort of follow up or a, a update on that study. We did primary data collection through interviews. We held over 25 interviews with different operators, the, the, the bigger operators uh, in the region, according to LACNIX ranking. And we sort of broke it down in, in three main sectors, business information, technology information to, to, uh, to assess the data, Sebastian said before. So what did we find first? Is that organic technology update of operators doesn't generate incremental costs or substantial costs for IPv6 deployment. That sort of doesn't match with the findings of the other study five years ago, when one of the main concerns with regards to IPv6 deployment was the associated costs. Now, what do we see now is that operators, I mean, update organically, and therefore, as they do this, and they upgrade, IPv6 is adopted as a baseline technology. The internal network, while well, it's a matter of different operators, some of them already support IPv6, others don't, is not yet considered a priority. And with regards to the end or final devices, well, Carlos also mentioned earlier, he spoke about content operators and end uh, devices or final devices or users, and that would be the third leg to complete that overview. With regards to support, vendors and suppliers didn't use to provide this kind of support. At the time, they were not so knowledgeable, and that was also an obstacle. We needed more know-how from operators and therefore knowledge and the know-how to implement those IPVC strategies was a point of concern. And there were many questions with regards to client support or customer support. IPv6 deployment would undoubtedly generate higher peaks and higher costs but we saw that there has not generated any specific demands or increased demands in this sense. Something important to consider are the devices. Why? Because even though the content could be IPv6 content and operators could have deployed already, if the end user has a device that it is not compatible with IPv6, that traffic will be used in IPv4. So those who have already deployed it will have to uh, turn a, a, and use intermediaries. So the CPE, if the CPE or modem is not IPv6 compatible, 
the traffic and that home or, or, or customer will be done through IPv4. And the same happens if there are any routers or any signal uh, repeaters. So many operators have already uh, updated or renewed these TPEs, for example, copper being replaced by fiber, but that is the starting point. And then we have another whole range of devices that could be used, for example, smart TVs. About two or three years ago have uh, what well, started to become compatible, some need changes in their settings. In the interviews, uh, smartphones came up. Some of them are IPv6 compatible, but some of the, uh, of the oldest models are not. So that could be a matter of uh, economic status or purchase power, but that type of user is, is the user that really appreciates IPv6 the, the, the most or is more aware of these concerns. And some of the drivers that will cause a broader IPv6 deployment has to do with IoT, the Internet of Things. There are many devices that are already designed for IPv6 and they will work much better under this standard. And these will allow for further development for different fields like the oil sector, mining, agricultural, and also uh, home robotics. Analysts expect for the Internet of Things to grow at a 12% annual rate. And there will be about 12 billion devices connected by 2025. And 5G deployment, it's also important to consider there will be a large amount of devices. Remember that 5G is like a triangle, low latency services, IoT, and bandwidth. And 5G adoption still not out there. There's been a tender in Chile. It is part of the agenda in many countries like in Brazil, but we'll still need maybe as of next year, a broader. We envisage 62 million connection. Like Oscar was saying and like Carlo was saying, gaming on line is one of the major drivers with demands for more services and of course for mobile services here we have apps that don't work with brief sessions and corporate customers all so this will lead to greater adoption so after the survey we did is to understand this. We sought to find differences at regional level. The first issue was to work in, and see how this was in each region and what this performed in each region. We saw that the performance of the operators depended largely on a business situation of the operator, not so much of the region where they are. So we developed and proposed this matrix where the situation of each operator with respect to the IPv6 deployment depends on the expectations regarding the business growth and the availability of IPv4 addresses. Of course, this is quite intuitive. Those who have too many IPv4 addresses would have lesser incentives to deploy this unless they have a big potential for growth in the business. But if the business does not grow, they don't have a business case that is a driver to acquire more IPv6 addresses. Yes, there are four quadrants here. Those who have no IPv4 availability and expect to grow and this aggressively. Those who have no addresses but don't expect to have too much growth. They have organic deployment in those who do have availability of IPv4 addresses but don't expect to have such a big business growth. And finally, those who have IPv4 growth and expect a high growth. The first quadrant, top left, 
this is we expect to have a more aggressive deployment. These are those operators that have no more IPv4 addresses, but expect a high demand as a result of the growth of their businesses. So they can increase the CGNAT capacity, but as you're aware, this has some technical limitations and leads to drops in the performance, and this is an additional cost. So we see that has a limitation, following which the deployment and adoption of IPv6 becomes necessary. Uh, other factors that disincentivize is that, for example, users in general are not aware of IPv6 is, this is quite common. So there is not such a big demand in the market, but even if this market this demand is not there, this type of operator will need to deploy IPv6 because they will run out of IPv4 addresses. Then we have the bottom left quadrant, those that don't expect aggressive growth in the business, but don't have IPv4 addresses. These operators, we understand, are those operators who seek to optimize their addresses, their IPv4 addresses to check the network to see which ones that are not being used to improve the performance and increase the capacity, the netting capacity. IPv6, they will be deploying it in a more organic and slower way in hand with the technological update of the devices. And Lack of motivation is the devices of the end users that might not be compatible. These operators do not expect to have such a major commercial growth. So this is something that prevents them from embarking on this deployment. The third quadrant, bottom right, are those operators that have availability of IP for addresses and don't expect to have a major growth. Major operators might have a backlog of IP4 addresses. They have an organic growth and hand with the growth of the country. So these operators with the number of IP4 addresses they have can already meet the needs of their customers and prefer not to enter into more complex issues. So they manage IPv4 and IPv6 simultaneously. So this is where we see that the IPv6 deployment will be much slower compared to the previous two. And finally, the upper right quadrant where the growth with IPv4 will be similar to the previous one. They have a growth, but they have addresses, but not such a major significant growth. This is based on the interviews we carried out. Now, the issue of the trends in the adoption of IPv4 and IPv6, IPv6 sorry, does not respond to regional reasons. It responds rather to issues that have to do with the business strategies of the different operators. As Sebastian was saying, we did an economic analysis seeking to give value to the deployment of IPv6. We developed a model and compared to the 2016 model where the focus was on the costs and how much it would cost to deploy IPv6 and comparing costs of natting, and buying IPv6 addresses and the increased growth of IPv4 addresses. In this case, this was more focused on the income. We took into account all the other costs, but the idea was focus, to focus on the income. Those operators at the top that deploy IPv6 compared to those operators that do not deploy IPv6. You have two minutes left. So we did a simulation with cash flow and compared with a discounted cash flow of these two operators. We have a picture such as this with where each operator will have to enter the value of their business, like the CG NAT capacity, the number of addresses, and so on. What we saw was that those operators with IP4 address availability will require 
by all means a deployment if they expect an annual growth that is higher if those that do not have ipv4 addresses which are the majority for moderate increases in the demand will need to deploy ipv6 sooner in dark color are those that will take longer to deploy ipv6 this analysis is reflected in the matrix we saw today regarding the conclusions well what you maybe you can look at some of the differences what we had back in 2016 and in 2020 we see that the transition to ipvc is no longer so complex there are many more network devices there's more know-how thanks to all these training activities as well as the development of knowledge there are also qualified operators to provide support so the situation is totally different today compared to 2016 we see that the uh, more prices to acquire ipv4 addresses there is more knowledge as to how to take advantage of having this update emerging technologies are catalyzers and this in the past was not so important and all the updated LACNIC policies and the warnings on the exhaustion of IPv4 done by LACNIC. So this has to be a driver for this transition, which was not so evident back in 2016. So regarding lessons learned, we saw that the business case largely depends on each situation and on each operator. The possibility of capturing additional demand that leads to an increase in income should be a driver for the business case this should be something to be considered by the cfos today this situation is not always the case but we suppose this will be the case in the future so the network people will need to seek additional funds to grow there is an increase in the demand and we see this looking forward particularly considering the pandemic that has led to this implementation is less and less complex the optimization of the ip4 addresses is reaching a limit and the content generators are deploying in ipv6 as to the cost these are part of the technological change the costs for ipv6 are not so big anymore and this is balanced out with the potential for additional revenue the deployment of ipv6 is associated to the technological progress so this will become a requirement to close we have here the barriers and these are mostly related to the lack of knowledge of the users the devices on customer side force you to use dual stack the customer requirements are not as transparent clients don't really know much about the ipv6 traffic except for some of the gamers that are more informed about and then there's a lack of incentive a lack of vision of the different stakeholders on the side of the operators the lack of percentage of the potential for additional revenue and on the side of the governments which don't perceive this as a limiting factor when trying to develop iot so we are at your disposal and if you have any questions we're happy to take these thank you sebastian thank you diego and let us briefly look at some of the questions before that let me remind the participants that they will have the presentations in our website and those that you cannot find you will please get in touch with us I have, we have a couple of questions from Cesar, Rossi, and Guillermo. They would like to know what tool can I use for IPv6 pool assignment to my clients, and what is a 
period of time in which the coexistence of IPv4 and IPv6 will be implemented and what is the amount of users in average that you have that these companies had. This is a question similar to the one that was asked to Carlos. We think that IPv4 will continue for a very long time. There is no estimated date for this to end. So coexistence will be with us for quite a long time, even decades. This will be quite a long coexistence. I wouldn't dare to establish a given date. As to Guillermo Pagliero's question and the number of users in average that these companies had, we took a sample of the countries of the region and from each country, we looked at the major operators. So this largely depends on each of the countries. Countries like Colombia, Argentina, Mexico, that have more inhabitants and have more clients per operator. And in Central America, these are smaller numbers of, of clients. We have a question in Portuguese. Felipe Correa would like to know, tell us about an approach for defining the IPv6 addressing for a campus network that already has IPv4 divided into several slash 24s. How would you approach this? Carlos, maybe you can help us out. Henry is also writing this in the Q&A section. In that sense, we might like to answer those who are sending the questions in the panel. You can. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Sebastian. We'll go on to the next presentation. Thank you very much.